Joe, what's been, you know, the... the uh... <laughs> you have to just get him eating the microphone. And that's the open. Just, ah. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back to a, another edition of Mets Perspective presented by Verizon, Jacob Resnick, Joe DeMeo with me once again. And it's a big week for the Mets. The 2021 amateur draft has come and gone. Big prize at the top, Kumar Rocker with the 10th overall selection out of Vanderbilt. Joe, coming into the season, I don't think anyone thought that Kumar Rocker would be able to fall to the Mets at number 10. Tell us how he got there. Coming into the spring, Kumar Rocker was the consensus number one overall pick. And I wonder a little bit if there was some prospect fatigue, along with, of course, some inconsistencies with his velocity this spring and just overall inconsistency. I think that pushed him down the boards just a little bit. I had been hearing for the last month or so that Rocker was going to fall out of the top five, but not really far outside of it. Uh, Once Arizona came on the clock at six and selected Jordan Lawler, the high school shortstop from Texas, the Kansas City Royals was the last team that could stand between Kumar Rocker getting to the Mets. And when they went with Connecticut high school lefty Frank Mazzucato, my eyes uh, perked up a little bit. Number eight, the Rockies were not allowed to select Rocker, actually. They drafted him out of high school, and a rule is he would have to sign a consent form to be redrafted by them, and he refused to do so. Uh, The Angels were never really on Rocker, and lo and behold, Rocker made it to number 10, and credit to the Mets for being able to operate on the fly and make that selection and be prepared to pay him reportedly an overslot bonus of about $6 million. I think we both agree, concerns aside, that Rocker comes into the organization and immediately becomes the top pitching prospect that the Mets now have. But I think the big question is now, where does he fit into the top 10? You've got Alvarez, Mauricio, Beatty. Where are you slotting in Kumar Rocker in your updated top 10? I'm slotting Kumar Rocker as the number two prospect in the system just behind Francisco Alvarez. You know, I spoke about the inconsistencies, but you're looking at a potential number two frontline starter if everything really gets put together. I think if you get him in front of the analytics staff and the new player development staff, I think you're going to be able to maximize Kumar Rocker's stuff, which when he's on is a fastball that'll sit 94 to 96, touch 98 miles an hour. His slider is a plus plus pitch, possibly the best slider in the entire draft. He could get big league hitters out with that pitch today. His curveball shows good movement skills. His changeup is a little behind, but that's pretty common for amateur players. But there's some feel there. So he has a chance to be an absolute workhorse type of guy at 6'5", almost 250 pounds with a four-pitch mix. There's no other way to say that, to me, the Mets got a steal at the number 10 pick. Yeah, and I certainly think there's going to have to be some element of patience uh, from Mets fans because we've heard about this name for so many years, Kumar Rocker. He was a top prospect coming into the draft a couple years ago out of high school. And now here he is again coming out of Vanderbilt. And he certainly could be relatively quick to the majors, but you know, he's got those kind of kinks he needs to work out. Like the velocity we've mentioned, working on that third pitch. He's also thrown a lot of innings this year in college, so he might not even pitch in the minor leagues this season. But we're really looking at 2022 where he's going to be full throttle and maybe not the Steven Strasburg type pitcher that I think some Mets fans might be thinking about in terms of coming out of the draft. But when it's all said and done, the Mets uh, certainly got themselves a future solid major leaguer at the very least. This week's guest is Kumar Rocker, the Mets first round pick from Vanderbilt. So first off, Kumar, congratulations on getting drafted. What was your reaction when you got the call that the New York Mets were drafting you with the 10th overall pick? Um, Excited. I mean, it's New York. The colors are perfect. And uh, it's a great it's a great place to be. And I'm excited to move forward just to be part of like New York and the Mets. And uh, it's it's a team that I've always looked out for. And uh, it's special to be part of. What do you know about the Mets? You know, current day, current day, I mean, of course, you hear about DeGrom, you hear about Stroman, and then Syndergaard as, like, from the pitcher perspective. But uh, a lot of good bats in the lineup, and uh, it's all around good team and a good place. Can you summarize the roller coaster of your entire college career from coming in as a freshman, bursting onto the scene, pitching in two College World Series, obviously the, the COVID year, cutting your sophomore year short, and then, uh, you know, building towards this moment? From the start, it started off rough, of course, for those first couple outings. 
And then moving forward, it got better. And then I ended uh, 2019 on a great note with a lot of good teammates that I got to learn from. And then uh, getting to sophomore year gets uh, cut off because of COVID. I think a lot of guys in my class lost the, lost the opportunity to play. And uh, it was a big year for them, of course. And then moving on to the junior year, uh, it was everything and more. I had ups and downs inside of it. And I had special people that came with it. For the Mets fans that may not know much about you, give them a scouting report of what Kumar Rocker brings to the table. He brings a good mindset, the ability to dominate, and then uh, he brings pitching to the table, a versatile uh, repertoire. I don't know how much time you've spent in the city, but how excited are you to experience the Big Apple as a New York Met? Um, that's it's it's crazy that this is what the future could possibly hold, and I'm 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 excited. So Kumar Rocker will grab all the headlines in the first round, but Joe, let's talk about the rest of the draft. Who are some guys who have uh, caught your eye? Some interesting picks that the Mets have made. I really want to highlight second round pick Calvin Ziegler, who the Mets drafted. He's a Canadian born prospect that moved to Florida to really pursue baseball at a higher level. And this is, Tommy Tain has told us on the last episode here of Mets Perspective, that the analytics staff was going to be heavily involved in the draft process this year. And to me, Calvin Ziegler is a prime example of that. I mean, you're talking, it's an all projection, upside arm, big arm strength up to 97 miles an hour with like 100% spin efficiency, big time spin rate guy on his slider, has a developing changeup. Uh, his command comes and goes at times, a bit of a raw prospect. And Ziegler's a guy that I think you could really look forward to as a potential number three, number four type starter if everything pans out. And then in the third round, they drafted Dominic Hamill, a right-handed pitcher from Dallas Baptist who a scout told me is a spin rate monster. All three of his pitches, huge spin rate numbers, uh, big life on his fastball that gets up to 96 miles an hour, breaking stuff, big time swing and miss. Uh, he set the Dallas Baptist record for strikeouts in a season. So I think the analytics staff had a big time role in day two of the draft, specifically with Ziegler and Hamill in rounds two and three. A starting pitcher to watch to me, Eighth rounder, Mike Vassell out of the University of Virginia. He's a guy that out of high school was slated to be a first or second round pick, get around $2 million. He ended up decommitting from the draft and going straight to college where he didn't necessarily put up maybe the results that he had wanted and fell to the eighth round. But Tommy Tana said on the media call that this is a guy that he thinks has mid rotation upside. Uh, his velocity right now is really strong early in games. They just need to get him to maintain it. But to me, that's an, a really nice upside starter in the eighth round. Maybe not too dissimilar from when they drafted Tyler McGill as kind of an under the radar starting pitching prospect that could end up a back end to mid rotation type starter if it all really comes together. Now, as we come through the rest of the summer towards the end of the season, Joe, what's one thing that you're really going to be looking forward to in the Mets minor league system? Just a real exciting time in the Mets system. I mean, they added 20 new prospects to the system through the Major League Baseball draft. And I'm very excited to see where they place these players for their initial minor league assignments. And then, you know, just follow their trek to the major leagues because there are multiple players that the Mets drafted over the last couple days that are going to be major league players. That'll do it for this week. We'll see you next time on Mets Perspective presented by Verizon. See the Mets of Tomorrow play today. The Brooklyn Cyclones play baseball on the beach all summer long. Visit brooklyncyclones.com slash tickets.